We're continuing this draft grading individual teams, and today we have the Chicago Bears, which, if you guys don't know, traded out of the first overall pick. But before we get into that one, I'm Two Toad Sports. Any, any support to this channel is greatly appreciated. With that being said, I want to jump into this one. Now I grade a little bit differently. I grade on draft specifically and things to do with the draft picks i don't grade on off-season moves this is strictly gra draft grades now i compare with my grade i give my own grade i have mel kuyper's grade and i have pff's grade here as well because i like to give three different perspectives so with that being said let's jump into this one the chicago bears moved out of the first overall pick went back to pick nine with that move they got nine 61 next year's first round pick of the carolina panthers which in my opinion could be another top 10 pick and 2025's second round pick as well as a much needed much upgraded dj moore that's an awesome trade for you guys that really is so at pick nine, what did you guys do? You moved back one spot. You swapped with the Eagles. The Eagles got Jalen Carter, as we all know. You guys got your offensive tackle in Darnell Wright. I like the move. If Darnell Wright was your guy and you moved back one spot, yeah, you could have went Jalen Carter there, but you guys view and love your draft capital. So, pre-draft analysis on the 6'5", 333-pound offensive tackle out of Tennessee, Darnell Wright. Wright is massive, but he plays with balance. He has a strength to move defenders off the ball when he latches on. He has the quickness to reach the second level, and he dominates linebackers when he gets into their pads. He rarely gives ground to power rushers, and he shows the ability to mirror when he's playing with urgency. Wright protects best as a right tackle, but can kick inside to guard in the right situation. Matt Miller's NFL comp is Caleb McGarry. Post-draft analysis. Wright steps into a situation where he is the immediate starter at right tackle. With a huge need opposite of Braxton Jones, his balance, strength, and aggression as a run blocker make him a candidate to quickly become a key component in the Bears' offensive front. Wright had zero blown blocks on 388 design run plays last season, which was the second best mark among FBS blockers. Projected year one, impact, plug and play starter. Wright will be tasked with starting day one at right tackle opposite of Jones and protecting QB Justin Fields. I'm not giving individual grades for each pick, but I thought this was a smart move. You move back, and then you move back again, and you got your offensive tackle. I loved it. Yeah, you could have had Jalen Carter. It's upsetting. But who knows? We got to see how he turns out. Of course, he went to the Eagles. But you guys got crazy draft compensation. Crazy draft compensation. Moving on to number two, you got Jervon Dexter. I loved this kid going into the draft. Why? He's a hog molly, man. He's a hog molly up front. Six foot six, 310 pound. Wow. You guys did trade your second round pick to the Pittsburgh Steelers to get Chase Claypool. So you really revamped that receiving core. So with that in mind, you got Jervon Dexter now. It's difficult to run at Dexter, who is adept at holding his ground versus double teams. Okay, He stands up to offensive linemen, locates the ball, and continues to improve his ability to off-block one-on-ones. As a pass rusher, he's more disruptive than his sack totals indicate. Dexter keeps his pads down and walks offensive linemen back into the QB. His post-draft analysis. Here we are. Chicago ranked 31st in run defense and last in scoring defense last year. 
Dexter has the skill set to quickly develop into an effective complement to run stuffing free agent signing Andrew Billings and shore up the middle of the Bears defense. Now, I liked this pick as well. Dexter is freaking massive. Like, holy shit, is he huge. Like, wow. I liked this one. I got, we're going to get into the next ones. Ready? Oh, Tyreek Stevenson was good value. Ready? Stevenson, six foot, 198. Stevenson is a tall and lean press corner with the length to get his hands on receivers and speed to run with them. He plays the receiver's hands and recovers well when he gets caught out of phase. He masks his tightness with bounce and burst. He's an aggressive run defender who needs to be more consistent wrapping up. All of these cornerback prospects have that issue, but he's good. He has good stopping power and the ability to blow up plays. His post-draft analysis. One year after selecting starting cornerback in Kyler Gordon in round two, the Bears get a potential outside starter in Stevenson. With Jalen Johnson entering the end of his rookie contract, Stevenson could be his running mate or potential replacement with Gordon lining up in the slot. I agree with this pick. Your draft needs coming into the draft were, if we can scroll up, tackle, outside linebacker, D tackle, corner, and RB. So with that being said, you double dipped here. This is interesting to me. Six foot four, 291 pounds out of South Carolina. As a pass rusher, Pickens is more disruptive than his sack totals would indicate. He is long and explosive with excellent first step quickness and good flexibility against the run. He's quick and disruptive. Pickens changes directions well when he gets into the backfield and shows good range for an interior defensive lineman when he chooses to pursue it. Post draft. The Bears picked a nose tackle in round two with Jervon Dexter, and now Coach Matt Eberflus gets his three-technique pass rusher. Pickens is just scratching the surface of his potential as gap-shooting interior rusher, and he will have an opportunity to start very early, given the lack of front-line talent at defense Chicago has. I like the double dip. These guys gas out. This is more of a pass-rushing one. Dexter's more of a run-stopping one, and you got Billings there as well. You got to keep the boys fresh and rotating all three, and if you know it's a goal line or whatever, all three of them are probably going to be in. I like this. I do. Roshan Johnson is the start of your home run picks to me. Six foot, 219 pounds. Johnson is a patient and efficient between-the-tackles runner who powers through arm tackles and pushes the pile he's a reliable safety valve who runs hard after the catch he's a willing blocker with the strength and toughness to anchor and pass pro johnson has the potential to develop into a core special teams player i don't agree with this i think there is a chance for this kid to eventually at a minimum be a two down back and you have a third down back he could be easily a part of a two-headed monster he was masked by none other than Bijan Robinson. That kid, Bijan, as long as he wants to stay in the game, he stays in the game. Roshan Johnson, go back, look at his. Honestly, go look at his tape. The kid looks good. He really does. Man, you guys had a hell of a lot of picks. I love Tyler Scott. So I like the value on Roshan Johnson. I like I love the value on Tyler Scott here. All right. 5'10, 177 out of Cincinnati. Scott is one of the most talented receivers in this class. He tracks the deep ball well and has the second gear to take the top off of the coverage. He is an instinctive open field runner who is smooth, turning upfield and pulls away from pursuit after the catch. Scott has a high ceiling as a route runner. In the fourth round, this is a solid pick, speedy pick. Adds another dimension to that receiving room. That's freaking awesome. This kid is going to play for you guys. In the fourth round, that's awesome. Great value too. Another very good value pick. Ready? Noah Sewell. I had him as a... He could have possibly been a very late third. 
and fourth round pick. You got him in the fifth. 6'2", 246. That's why I like him. He's a traditional linebacker. Sewell is strong, has a low center of gravity, and anchors, anchors well. He's a powerful striker between the tackles, and he stacks and sheds tight ends. He raises the QB and flashes above average ball skills and underneath coverage. This kid is going to be a monster. He doesn't, he's not that typical. In this draft, you're seeing way too many 220 pound linebackers. You have a 246 pound linebacker who can still move. This is a good pick. And man, and this is a Bears middle linebacker. The kid is mean. If you guys seen Oregon's tape, this kid is mean. He fell down because his last year, this past year, his tape didn't look as good. But man, man, this is a solid pick in the fifth. Solid pick in the fifth. Grabbing a 6'1", 204-pound corner. Okay? In the fifth. Terrell Smith out of Minnesota. Smith has experience playing multiple positions and coverages, but he's at his best as a press man corner. Has long arms. It's physical within the first five yards and can run with almost all wide receivers. Smith is tough, works to get off blocks, and developed into much more reliable tackle. This is another good value pick in the fifth. You guys catching on here? I did not like this pick. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that with I didn't like this pick. Travis Bell, 6'1", 280 pounds at a Kenesaw State. Kenesaw. I mean, the guy's not even ranked. These last two aren't even ranked. Bell has good blend of size, quickness, and range. He has the low center of gravity and natural leverage to get under blocker. Bell's a better run defender than pass. Reason I didn't, there's no need to triple dip here. There really isn't. You got two already. There was no need to triple dip here. I would rather you went offensive lineman. Seventh round, Kendall Williamson, Stanford corner. Williamson is a four-year starter with good size, length, top end speed. He's an active run defender, but an inconsistent tackler who needs to do a better job of wrapping up at times. This is probably a special teams pick. There's nothing wrong with grabbing another corner this late in the draft, especially on a comp pick. Overall, I'm going to give you guys a B plus because the movement, man. You guys got future picks. Um, you have a next year's first of the Panthers, which could be a top 10 pick. You got the 2025 second. You got DJ Moore. You moved back again. You got Darnell Wright. I like, I like the Dexter pick. Stevenson was good value. Pickens was all right. Roshan Johnson and Tyler Scott, I believe, are good values and will make impacts. Noah Sewell is one of my, honestly, he's going to play for you guys. I'm going to say it right now. He's going to play for you guys, and people are going to look at this pick in a year or two and say, we messed up. He was better than a fifth-round pick. He's better than a fifth-round pick. 246-pound interior linebacker who can hold it well, better than a fifth-round pick. I'm giving you guys a B plus. Let's move over to Mel Kuyper, baby, and see what he gives you girls, huh? Okay. The Bears received a spectacular haul when they traded down from one with the Panthers adding picks 9 and 61 plus a, sec, plus a 2024 first rounder and 2025 second rounder in DJ Moore. They got help for now and later, setting themselves up to fill crucial needs in this draft. Even though they traded it, even though they traded at mid-season, what ended up as the top pick of the second round, they still had four selections in the top 64. So how'd they do? By the way, the pick that they traded away ended up being Joey Porter Jr. That would have been huge for them. But everything happens for a reason. We shall see how that turns out. Chicago has been connected with Darnell Wright for months. I matched this one in my two-round mock, mostly because of its gaping void at right tackle. 
Wright is the best right tackle in this class, a 333-pound lineman who started 42 games in college. He's ready to play right now. I was more down. I was more down. Sorry. I was more down on two of its day two picks, as I mentioned Friday. But I get building through the trenches. It's just that both Jerron Dexter and Zach Pickens were a round early based on my rankings. I had Dexter in that round, to be honest. I had Dexter in the second round. I don't know if he was going before Siiki Ika, though. But I had Dexter in that round. Um, some of this had to do with getting ahead on the defensive tackles early in a thinner than normal class. But I'm grading each class on value. And so the Bears have to get dinged. As for the rest of the class, I'm a fan. Running back Roshan Johnson played behind Bijan at Texas, but Johnson probably would have started at most other FBS schools. He's a powerful between the tackles. He is powerful between the tackles. Exactly what I said. I think he would have started. I, he's going to play a role. He's going to play a role in that offense. Tyler Scott is a slot wideout who runs after the catch like a tailback. Linebacker Noah Sewell was a tackling force in college, and now he'll get to try to blitz past his brother, who, by the way, is a tackle for the Lions. Terrell Smith is my 14th ranked corner, and the Bears got him a round later than I ended him going. I like what general manager Ryan Poles do is sorry. Wow. What I can't speak. I like what general manager Ryan Poles is building in Chicago and 2024 draft capital. He acquired combined with another step forward from QB. Justin Fields means this team's this team will challenge the NFC quickly. Just not this season. I don't know about that. They they there could be a possibility there. Mel also gave you a B plus. Okay. Mel also gave you a B plus. What does PFF say about you? Chicago Bears, you didn't you didn't get a B plus grade. Um, that's another team. So look how many picks you had. Two, four, six, ten picks. Nice job. Day one. Wright fills a need for the Bears, but he is just the 22nd ranked player on PFF draft board. He produced a PFF grade of just 71.4 in 22, but has some really good reps on tape where he just overpowers people. He allowed just eight total pressures. Dexter's 4.88 second 40-yard dash at 6'6 six six and 318 pound, ranked in the 83rd percentile amongst interior defenders in the entire database. But he needs to turn that athleticism into more production at the next level. Dexter is young at just over 21 years of age. He offered very little as a pass rusher in 22 with just a 55.2 grade, but his explosiveness is evident. He's not an elite athlete at the position, which is likely why he's mid-second round player. But he does have the size and production does have the size and production to make this an intriguing pick after starting his career at georgia stevenson really came into his own at miami he still has a lot to learn and develop but produced a 79.5 pff grade in coverage after taking florida's interior defender jervon dexter senior late in the second round the bears add another to the interior of their defense with a player with more pass rush juice Exactly what I said. Pickens put up an 11.5 pass rush win rate late, uh, sorry, last season with his 91st percentile broad jump showing up on tape. The Bears defensive interior ranked 32 in the league in a PFF grade last season. So the team is investing a lot to change that. That is the reason they double dipped. Pickens is the pass rusher. Dexter's the clog. I like it. I just don't know about the third dip. That was, that was weird to me. Now we're on to Roshan Johnson. Johnson was overshadowed by Bijan in Texas backfield, but brings plenty to the table for a team that should run more than just about any team in the NFL next season. Johnson earned 80-plus PFF rushing grades in four consecutive seasons there. That's awesome. Uh, this is great value for a player like Scott. He's not the biggest player, and as a converted running back, he's still learning the position. Still. He can fly, and he averaged 16.4 yards per catch with Cincinnati in 22. He did drop 11.3% of passes thrown his way, but the big play ability he offers makes sense here. It's a day three pick. I really, what do you say about Sewell? 
or Sewell, however people want to pronounce it. He's one of the more physical linebackers in the draft, but his lack of change of direction ability is going to be an area of concern in the NFL. Sewell recorded PFF grades between 70 and 72 in three consecutive seasons at Oregon, and now joins a revamped Bears linebacking core. They like the heavier, bigger linebackers. So everything came together for Smith in 2022, 80.9 overall grade after genuinely poor grading the previous three years. Smith has the size and straight line speed to play corner, but lacks agility. His build and play strength could facilitate a move to safety where he could learn the position behind Eddie Jackson and Jaquan Brisker. Here's the triple dip. Bell is an undersized interior defense alignment at just six feet, but displayed upper body strength with 30 reps on the bench and good explosiveness with 33 inch vert. Bell earned an 88.9 run defense grade in 22, which is needed on a bears defense looking to continue bolstering that position. Williamson had plenty of experience with 2,600 snaps over the past five seasons, but never produced a PFF grade above 70 in those seasons. Missed 20% of the tackles he attempted this past season. That's tough. Maybe a little too much for special teams. But PFF agrees with my grade and Mel Kuyper's grade of a B+. Plus. Once again, guys, um, I honestly think the Bears are going to be all right this year. I really do. This is a solid, solid draft class. I don't think you're going to end up picking number one again. Let's be honest here. But... I really like the draft picks here. I love Roshan Johnson. I love Dexter. I, I genuinely think he's gonna he's gonna be a clog, clog in there. Darnell Wright's an awesome pick. I think Noah Sewell's gonna be good, and Tyler Scott you're gonna get some production out of. So that really gives the Bears my draft grade of a B plus. Once again, guys, if you do not agree or you have another grade or you have any thoughts or any prospects that I may have missed or maybe didn't take something into consideration, please leave it down in the comment section below. I would love to have a conversation with some of you Bears fans and NFL fans in general. I am a Chargers fan. I have to disclose that. So I try to be a little biased. I am an NFL fan in general. I don't really like to pay play favorites. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please, any support to the channel is much appreciated. As always, guys, thank you for watching.